I'm very excited to be here uh, on day two of the Inner Source Summit. Uh, it's always a pleasure for me to be talking about the top trends in software engineering. Um, as you've heard, I'm an analyst in Gardner's software engineering practice, and that is why I'm very passionate about topics related to software engineering, such as inner sourcing and how to accelerate innovation by initiating inner sourcing in your organization. There we go. Um, to set the frame here, I want to start with a little story, an episode about Steve Jobs. When Steve was surreptitiously shown the door at Apple, he didn't get despondent. Instead, he continued on and acquired a small hardware company, a company called Pixar. And he began a transformation of this company from a hardware company to the animation company that we all know. One of the things they had to do as part of this transformation was to build a new campus. And so they bought a lot in the Bay Area that used to be a canning plant. And they had the architects come up with a set of plans for it. The original plan was to build three buildings, one for animators, one for engineers, and one for management, because you want to keep them away from everyone else. But Steve felt they needed to do things a bit differently, and he made a key determination. So what they did was they built one big building with a gigantic atrium in the middle of it. Why? Because he knew that by doing this, he would help drive innovation in the organization through collaboration. When it launched, it was all over the media, the great atrium, the great space, and Pixar became a great animation firm known for really disrupting the industry with many thought-leading concepts. And to me, this is the same thing that we're trying to get at as we look at InnerSource, drive innovation in the organization through collaboration. With InnerSource, what we're going to try is to replicate that building with the great atrium. Now, in most organizations, our software organization looks like the original plan for Pixar. Conway's law plays out as we have software engineering teams in different buildings and different silos, and things are spread all over the place. That means that for many of you, the safe pathway to successfully adopting InnerSource may be to start out a little bit more scaled down. And our research shows that it is actually the pathway that companies that have gone down the inner source route have taken. But we will also look at how this has been applied in the large. It's definitely time to break down the silos. There are three key elements that I want to cover when I talk about inner sourcing. First, how to initiate inner source efforts by creating a vision finding a champion and identifying the assets. Prepare the space, if you like. Grow inner source efforts by adopting a shared repository model and overseeing the creation of a community of practice. Set the environment, create the atrium, and put in the sofas. And sustain inner source efforts by establishing an inner source program office and providing developers with clear incentives, provide structure, put in more furniture and food to make it even more attractive to a wider audience. So what is inner source? I'm sure you all know this, but I'm gonna cover it real quick. Inner source is obviously about taking the concepts of open source and applying them to your internal software. What does open source mean? It means the source code is available for everyone. And in an inner source effort, I make my source code available so not only my team or my business unit can see it, but everyone in the organization can see it. And because we want to create this atrium where all the parts of the business can be together. All of this sounds great, but what is the state of inner source? How do developers actually rate the importance and satisfaction of inner source 
efforts in their organization. We wanted to understand this better. And so Gartner ran a survey, the Developer Experience Assessment, which is a web-based survey that solicits feedback from internal software development staff about their satisfaction with and perceived importance of 21 key attributes of the developer experience, inner source being one of them. The assessment provides a benchmark of developers' experience, and it identifies improvement priorities for the organization. The results include responses from more than 3,500 software development team members from over 40 organizations across industries, geographies, and revenue bands. While the results of this survey do not represent global findings or the market as a whole, they do reflect the sentiments of the respondents and companies surveyed. And as we can see, there clearly is room for improvement when it comes to inner source practices. If we break out the data for inner source practices a bit more, we can have a closer look and see that about a third or 32% of respondents were satisfied or extremely satisfied. It also means that two thirds were dissatisfied, neither dissatisfied or satisfied or somewhat satisfied. The other interesting aspect here is that when we look at satisfaction levels by tenure with the organization, there are noticeable differences. Development staff with a tenure of less than two years have a significantly higher level of satisfaction, 41%, than those that have been in the organization for more than 10 years, which is only 22%. And developers with a tenure of two to 10 years fall in the middle with 31%. So tenure with the organization is one of the things you can look into if you want to find champions for initiating an inner source effort. So let's look a bit closer at what you can do to successfully initiate an inner source effort. Well, it all starts by defining a vision for inner source. The vision must be compelling to the business to support the effort and to the developers to engage with the effort. The organizations we interviewed said they started small, but they had a clear vision of what they wanted to achieve. So software engineering leaders must set and communicate the vision and recognize that InnoSource is primarily about cultural change. It is these leaders that are initiating the cultural change, but software engineers are executing it by creating the assets and building the community. Building code and opening it up so anyone in the organization can see can be uncomfortable for software engineers. So with this in mind, the vision needs to support psychological safety. Support uh, software engineering leaders must consistently remind their teams about the purpose and goals of inner source and drive cultural change that is supportive and team oriented. To start realizing the inner source vision, you must identify at least one inner source champion. Inner source champions are the first people to put the vision into practice. They can be inner source developers, but product managers or architects could also make great champions. These champions are tasked with locating potential assets as well as recruiting and coaching developers who have an affinity for the concept and can contribute to the initial project. Developers who are engaged in the open source community are excellent candidates to provide initial assets. Inner source champions must locate assets that are already being shared around the organization or that use common frameworks and components. As most organizations have a set of distributed repositories specific to certain teams or divisions, 
champions need to search for assets across these distributed silos of information. Search tools like Sourcegraph or Atlassian FishEye or um, what we just heard um, from Shell, uh, Fleming, I think it was called, they can assist with the search. When identifying potential assets for a source, champions must ensure that those assets have an owner, a maintainer who will maintain the asset. And clear ownership will enable the value of the assets to grow. So let's quickly recap these three elements. Creating a vision, finding a champion, and start identifying assets. Now let's look at how to grow inner source with the organization. At this stage, software engineering leaders and inner source champions should expand beyond having one or two shared assets by using collaborative models to solve problems and introduce more code assets in the program. To accomplish this growth, adopt a shared repository model and use culture hacks such as hackathons. Keep inner source super simple at the beginning. Don't kill inner source by seeking perfection. Rather, create the foundation and enable developers to drive it. In our interviews with organizations about their inner source practices, we found common patterns of initiation. It always started with the shift to using Git. Git is the atrium of source code, if you like. So part of this is the natural association that Git has with open source. But you can still end up with siloed Git repos. This would be like taking the atrium and deciding it would be more efficient if we just put in a bunch of cubicles. Inner source champions find it challenging to locate potential inner source assets in distributed, siloed, and often restricted repositories that are used by different teams and lines of business across the organization. Inner source initiatives require shared repositories that can be assessed by every software engineer within the organization. So organizations should instantiate a common shared Git platform instance to enable team to establish proven practices and introduce a small set of assets and people into a common area and manage their repositories in a consistent fashion. Eventually, these small contributions will create a critical mass that enables organizations to move from silo teams with copies of the same function and code and achieve their vision of sharing development assets and standards. So the direction here is not to rebuild your current organizational structure. It is simply to create a shared space where everyone can meet. So now you have a beautiful open space it needs some furnishing to get things going. Now, one of the organizations we have interviewed about their inner source journey is Fannie Mae, who are also a sponsor of this summit. Uh, Fannie Mae is in the financial services industry with headquarters in Washington, DC, and they have about 8,000 employees. So Fannie Mae established various technology guilds focused on different skills and domains, and their technology guild system reinforces open source principles and provides visibility on open source initiatives across the organizations. And they do that via a number of different mechanisms. They have shared interest groups dedicated to specific technical domains to help developers stay current on new trends and capabilities from open source tools and communities. Peer support channels emulate open source community principles by encouraging developers to lean on peer support to solve problems rather than submitting help desk tickets. Hackathons help build momentum for inner source projects by bringing people together who may not typically contribute. 
guest speakers and forums, inspire developers, and drive greater engagement with open source tools and communities by exposing developers to new technologies and practices. So if we look at the key steps for growing in a source, there are things like adopting a shared repository model. That's the starting point. Running hackathons, building a community of practice. So basically you're setting the environment, create the atrium, and you put in the sofas. Now let's look at how to sustain inner source within your organization, because that is not an easy task. You have a vision, you have a common space, you may even have some residents, but that doesn't mean the neighbors will come out and meet each other. When the Pixar atrium was built, it had several design features to drive its use. All of the mailboxes were there. Uh, that's where, where the foosball tables were. It was where all the food was. And originally, <laughs> that was to be the only bathroom location. That is creating a need-based pathway. To sustain inner, for, inner source efforts, software engineering leaders must ensure that their inner source team establishes governance measures to sustain the software assets. Why do we need governance? Well, as more teams rely on inner source assets, the value of these assets grows. Thus, these assets must be protected with greater governance measures while still allowing contributors to extend, contribute, and fork the assets. So as these inner source efforts expand, the initial inner source team will need to scale and connect with additional organizations. And to build these connections, software engineering leaders should lead the creation of an inner source program office. Such an organization is similar in structure to an open source program office and serves similar goals to promote, govern, and sustain organization-wide inner source initiatives. Inner source initiatives begin as non-scheduled work. As long as inner source continues as unplanned work, it does not have an associated budget, and it isn't part of the employee's stated objectives. When inner source is seen, as an extracurricular activity, it is difficult to sustain the effort and deliver predictable releases. So incentivize developer engagement by providing the technology, the space, the time that teams need to support inner source content creation and participation. Inner source should not be seen as an extracurricular activity, but rather a valuable endeavor for which time is allocated during normal working hours. Modify employee objectives in the performance system to include inner source contributions and recognize the stats of gamification. Create constructive recognition programs on the inner source website and in company updates for maintainers and contributors to projects. Gamify these programs with batches and certifications and drive participation and provide recognitions from peers. You can drive even greater participation from open source and inner source initiatives by establishing a program to publicly recognize and reward developers' contributions. An incentive program can leverage gamification through leaderboards and a batching system. The leaderboards can highlight developer achievements and top contributors to various open source and inner source objectives. A batching system can recognize the contributions of developers or teams, which is designed to motivate others to contribute while building morale 
and a sense of shared goals among team members. And the batches also enable peers to easily see who they can learn from as well as identify potential collaborators for future projects. I want to come back to Fannie Mae. The first place everybody starts is to use open source to help them build applications more quickly. Then it is also about putting practices in place to make sure that you're using the best code and using it well and making sure that you're using supported and compliant code. And as engineers increase their familiarity, then they should also increase their capability for contributing to open source projects. And they start to learn things like you don't have to be on the same team to contribute to a set of projects. You can be more dynamic in your team makeup and contribution can happen in multiple places. You start evolving your means of governance to accommodate this type of application and collaboration that your developers are taking on. So we covered three key elements of successful inner sourcing. Initiate inner source efforts by creating a vision, finding a champion and identifying assets. It's about preparing the space. Grow inner source efforts by adopting a shared repository model and overseeing the creation of a community of practice. Set the environment. Create the atrium. Sustain inner source efforts by establishing an inner source program office and providing structure. Provide structure, put in the furniture and food to make it even more attractive to an even wider audience. And coming back to Steve Jobs again, and one more thing, as we have interviewed a number of companies about their inner source practices, many, while a few years in, were still early in their maturity. But as more are successful, I encourage you to try this out. Start small with a set of individuals, then grow to teams. And while it is first involves just a few developers, over time, it may well expand to involve the business as well as engineering. Finally, here are a couple of research notes on the topic that Gartner has produced, and I will leave you with a final slide that has a couple of links to additional information. I want to thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you very much for being here.